Elias Canetti, Crowds and Power. Welcome to the fascinating world of eCrowds and Power by Elias Canetti. Delve into the dynamics of crowd behavior and discover how power plays a crucial role in shaping our societies. This book summary will take you on a journey through the types of crowds, their common traits, and how they are deeply rooted in the evolution of human associations. Explore the connections between religion and crowd behavior and understand how nationalism is linked to the crowd. Uncover the essence of power and unravel the symbolism attached to forces like lions, tigers, and eagles. The Intriguing Nature of Crowds A crowd is not just a large group of individuals, but a collective with a shared identity and purpose, leading to a distinct sense of unity and equality among its members. There are five types of crowds based on their motivating emotions, each with its unique characteristics, baiting, flight, prohibition, reversal, and feast crowds. Regardless of their type, all crowds share four key attributes, growth, equality, density, and a goal that holds them together. Imagine the remarkable transformation that occurs in a gathering of frustrated individuals waiting for a delayed train. Just a moment ago, they were all engrossed in their private bubbles, but suddenly, they unite in mutual impatience and the collective desire to reach their destinations. This phenomenon represents how a crowd forms, as people with different backgrounds and interests identify with one another and become part of a uniform mass. A crowd is not merely defined by its numbers, but by its unifying sense of belonging and togetherness. Within this cohesive assembly, every member shares equal standing, erasing any previous distinctions that may have existed. However, crowds can be classified into five different types based on their emotional content. 1. Baiting crowds have a violent objective, seeking to vanquish a chosen target, for instance, the crowd calling for Jesus Christ's crucifixion. 2. Flight crowds emerge as a group of people face a mutual threat, dissolving once the danger subsides. 3. Prohibition crowds are marked by their refusal, as seen in striking workers on a picket line. 4. Reversal crowds, fueled by rebellion, aim to overthrow existing power hierarchies, like slave revolts or mutinous soldiers. 5. Feast crowds gather for shared indulgence, usually in the form of extravagant food festivals. Even with their distinct purposes, all crowds exhibit four universal attributes. First, growth occurs as the crowd actively seeks more members to amplify its presence. Second, equality is established once the crowd has formed, leveling social standing among members. Third, Density is typical in crowds, with physical closeness creating an unbreakable bond. Lastly, a common goal is essential for the crowd's existence, driving their unified actions. Upon achieving or abandoning this goal, the crowd dissipates, and its members return to their individual lives. Understanding the nature of crowds, their types, and the underlying factors that define them can help decode the enigmatic power they hold in shaping our social dynamics and collective behavior. From packs to crowds. Crowds are an evolved form of social grouping, with roots in the ancient pack systems of early humans. Packs, unlike crowds, don't focus on growth but operate as small, isolated groups. For types of packs can be identified, hunting, war, lamenting, and increase packs. The increase pack, striving for expansion, eventually gave rise to the dense, populous nature of modern crowds. Tracing the origins of crowds takes us back to the beginnings of human society, when social groups were organized as packs. These early packs were characterized as small, isolated clusters surrounded by wilderness, rather than ever-growing populous groups of people. Both crowds and packs share core traits, such as equality in unified direction. Examining the four primary pack types begins with the hunting pack, a cooperative group formed to take down dangerous or large animals. Following that is the war pack, which focuses on attacking fellow human beings and rival packs. The lamenting pack unites in times of grief, mourning the loss of a group member and performing necessary funeral rites. 
Lastly, the Increase PAC seeks growth and progress, pursuing expansion and connection beyond its borders. It's this last type, the Increase PAC, that ultimately evolves into the modern crowd we recognize today. As the world became more populated and interconnected, the Increase PAC transformed into the dense, ever-growing groups that characterize today's crowds. The Lament in World Religions the dynamics of religious rituals can be traced back to ancient pack and crowd behaviors, particularly the act of lamentation. In Islam, the Hajj is a pilgrimage to Mecca, where Muslims unite and equalize as they round the Kaaba. Shia Islam particularly emphasizes lamentation, with Shiites mourning the death of their third Imam, Hussein. Likewise, Christianity focuses on the lament surrounding Jesus Christ, who is regarded as a savior. Both religions' rituals bear resemblance to the practices of lamenting packs that grieve the loss of a valued member. Religious rituals have deep-rooted connections to ancient human behaviors, particularly the practice of lamentation. Examining these connections provides insight into how certain religious customs may have evolved from these primal bonds. In the case of Islam, daily prayer serves as a unifying factor for devout Muslims, who often pray in small groups, forming prayer packs. During the Hajj, or the Great Islamic Pilgrimage to Mecca, pilgrims from around the world gather as an equal and united crowd, each with the common goal of circling the sacred Kaaba. The Shia branch of Islam possesses a particularly strong relationship between religious customs and the age-old practice of lamentation. Shiites, followers of Shia Islam, fervently mourn the death of their third Imam, Hussein. Believing that the Imam is the true leader of all Muslims, Hussein's execution at the hands of the Caliph's troops in 680 CE continues to inspire deep grief among Shiites today. This lamentation is central to the Shia faith. Christianity, too, shares in the practice of lamentation. As followers of Jesus Christ reflect upon his crucifixion, they join in the ancient rhythm of pack mourning that preceded them. Jesus, the revered Savior of the Christian faith, embodies the essence of sacrifice and devotion to higher values, as He willingly died for the sins of humanity. Both Islam and Christianity reveal connections to time-honored pack and crowd behaviors, particularly lamentation. As religious rituals continue to evolve, the significance of these primal connections remains unwavering. The Power of Crowd Symbols Nationalism stems from the inherent human desire to belong to something larger than oneself, a crowd. Each nation has its own unique crowd symbols that its citizens strongly identify with, transcending individual identities. These symbols can serve as a foundation for unity, but when taken to the extreme, they can contribute to some of the darkest episodes of human history. For example, the English envision their nation as ships at sea representing their individualism while Germans relate to the image of a marching forest, symbolizing their affinity for woodlands. Other nations, such as France and Spain, rally behind symbols of revolution and the matador, respectively. The Jewish people's connection shifts to their collective memory of the Exodus, embodying the journey in search for the promised land. Recognizing and understanding these crowd symbols can help unpack the driving forces behind nationalism and its potential consequences. Unraveling Power's Origins Power is a fundamental concept and extends beyond physical force, often represented by seizing, killing, and eating. The acts and symbolism of the hand, fingers, and mouth are all intimately tied to the origins of power, and these connections can be seen in various aspects of human culture. In some societies, this relationship with food and consumption even contributes to the selection of leaders, demonstrating the depth of power's roots in these primal actions. Delving into the nature of power, one may find that its roots lie in the actions of seizing, killing, and eating, all symbolized through the hand, fingers, and mouth. Unlike physical force confined to the present moment, power transcends spatial and temporal constraints, making its impact far-reaching. An object seized tightly in one's hand epitomizes power, much like the large paws of felines such as lions and tigers. Furthermore, fingers illustrate power through their pointed tips and strong nails, particularly the index finger, which jabbing and pointing actions resemble stabbing. 
This reinforces the idea that those with power have the ability to kill. Eating also demonstrates power, with the consumer breaking down and absorbing the substance of the prey, ultimately incorporating it into their body. Teeth, as natural tools of power, serve as symbols of strength and influence, often represented by the iconic images of predatory animals like lions and tigers. In some cultures, the relationship between eating and power directly affects leadership selection, with the top eaters assigned leadership roles. This could be because food is a result of successful hunting and killing, a display of power itself. Other societies believe that simply possessing an abundance of food signifies power, regardless of the act of consuming it. In essence, one can see how deeply ingrained the concept of power is in different aspects of human society, with origins rooted in primal actions and symbolism spanning across various cultural practices. Power and the Survivor's Triumph Power transcends physical force, it's fundamentally tied to the ability to survive and triumph over adversity. This innate connection can be seen in various cultural beliefs and mythologies, where the survivor is perceived as powerful and elevated. From the paranoid king maintaining his rule through tyranny, to tribal cultures attributing supernatural powers to victorious warriors, the survivor's triumph serves as a potent symbol of power, making them feel invincible and garnering the admiration of those around them. Power is more than just the exertion of force, it is intrinsically connected to the concept of survival. To possess power is to endure the harshest conditions and come out triumphant, marking the survivor as uniquely powerful. Envision a warrior standing tall amidst a battlefield or the battle has only just ended. His survival over the defeated adversaries not only amplifies his self-confidence but also denotes him as exceptional. This perception of the survivor is not limited to their own perspective, as others are likely to ascribe power to them due to their conquering status. The dynamics of authority and rulership in many societies echo this sentiment, rulers are often viewed as resilient, like the paranoid king who fends off threats through relentless authoritarian measures. This association of power and survival permeates the mythologies and beliefs of various cultures. The tribes of Polynesia uphold the idea of mana, a supernatural force that warriors carry with them. As they conquer their enemies, they absorb their opponent's mana, increasing their own power. In a similar vein, the Mernjin people of Australia believe that when a man kills another, the victim's spirit imbues the killer with doubled strength. Various cultural myths also link their origins to a catastrophe, in which only a handful of people survived. Consider the biblical tale of Noah and his wife, who overcame the great flood and formed the basis of the human lineage. A similar myth exists within the North American Kootenai tribe, where the tribe emerged from merely three individuals who endured a devastating epidemic. In these stories, the survivor's triumph is celebrated and symbolizes the paramount connection between power and resilience. Power beyond force. Power transcends the mere application of force. While force is a necessary aspect of power, it extends beyond it, as seen in examples such as symbology and manipulation. Classic symbols of power include animals like lions, leopards, eagles, and falcons or mythological elements like Zeus lightning bolts. In addition to force, power also involves manipulation, which can manifest through verbal or mental techniques, such as strategic questioning or disguising intentions. The mastery of these methods can reveal or maintain power, just as silence and secrecy can serve as powerful tools in retaining control and dominance. In observing a cat hunting a mouse, one witnesses the dynamic relationship between force and power. Though force plays a part in the cat's eventual dominance, it is the act of playing with the mouse, releasing it and then catching it again, that demonstrates power as more than just a physical ability. Symbols often represent power, with animals being a popular choice across various cultures. Africans affiliated lions and leopards with royalty, Egyptians worshipped falcon-headed deity Horus, and Romans illustrated the ascension of emperors' souls as eagles. The Greeks even utilized lightning bolts to signify Zeus' swiftness and strength. Manipulation is another aspect of power, often taking the form of verbal or mental techniques. 
Strategies like expert questioning or hiding true thoughts and intents are indirect methods that still exert influence. For instance, Socrates was a master of questioning, dominating conversations by compelling partners to reveal more about themselves, while the person asking the questions remains guarded. Power also thrives in secrecy. Silence, much like armor, can deflect invasive queries and help maintain authority. In the same way that a cat lies in wait for its prey, a powerful ruler may also maintain discretion about their true intentions, allowing them to retain control and remain unpredictable. Unraveling the power of commands Commands are inherently rooted in expressions of power and often originate from threats of death, such as a lion's roar. These clear and firm instructions are always external to us, and we obey them due to the dominating force that issues them. Over time, human societies have domesticated command giving, where threats of death are replaced with inducements like food in exchange for obedience, as seen in parent child and pet owner relationships. However, the military remains one area where traditional command structures persist, as obedience to authority is crucial, and members can never be equal. Power of Transformation In the Georgian fairy tale, The Master and His Apprentice, a boy's magical transformations demonstrate the struggle for power through adaptation. This concept transcends into the animal kingdom and human society as well. By examining transformation strategies in nature and human interactions, we learn about the importance of adaptation to maintain control and ensure survival. The Bushmen of Southern Africa embody a deep understanding of transformations, reportedly sensing distant events and embodying the experiences of others, including animals, to grasp the bigger picture around them. The tale, The Master and His Apprentice, exemplifies the power dynamics in adapting and constantly transforming. As the characters use their malleability to outsmart each other, this ancient story highlights nature's underlying rule, adapt or perish. When confronted with predators, some animals may employ a transformation of their own, playing dead. By challenging the predator's expectations, they convince their foe to abandon the chase. Humans, too, rely on transformational tactics to attain dominance, often using deception or wearing false masks to disguise their intentions. In dictatorships, a leader may portray benevolence while secretly unmasking opponents wearing a loyal facade. In both cases, the essence of survival depends on adaptability and the accuracy of the transformed version. Southern Africa's bushmen have demonstrated a profound understanding and application of transformation. Their societies illustrate a heightened sensitivity to the environment and an ability to detect distant occurrences. These abilities reportedly allow them to sense physical pain experienced by people close to them or even perceive an insect bite on an ostrich's neck as if it were their own. Through this heightened awareness, the Bushmen reveal the transformative power embedded in connecting with the world around them. By embracing constant adaptation, individuals can navigate power struggles, maintain control, and experience a deeper connection to their environment. Ultimately, transformation is a key component to not only survive but flourish in life's complex dynamics. Unveiling Power Through Posture Power dynamics are reflected in human postures, such as standing, sitting, and lying down. Standing symbolizes confidence and independence, distinguishing humans from other animals. Sitting, depending on context, can represent authority or submission, as chairs evolved from thrones, and sitting in the presence of superiors was a sign of distinction. Lying down signifies vulnerability, as it leaves one unprotected. Apart from postures, Power also attempts to claim and regulate time to create a lasting impact on history. Power dynamics are subtly yet openly displayed in our postures. Analyzing someone's stance can offer insights into their authority and status. Three primary positions demonstrate these dynamics, standing, sitting, and lying down. A person who stands projects independence, implying they don't require support. Standing denotes confidence and self-sufficiency, setting humans apart from most animals that lack the ability to stand unsupported on two legs. In contrast, sitting can convey both power and powerlessness, depending on the context. Seated on the ground, an individual may appear submissive, 
whereas sitting in a chair could represent authority. Historically, chairs were derived from thrones, denoting prestige and power for those who sat in them. While those with higher status sat, their subordinates stood in their presence. Lying down, on the other hand, displays vulnerability. In a prone position, one is exposed and defenseless, especially during sleep. The stark contrast between standing and lying down showcases the power dynamics at play. A person rising from a lying position to their feet exhibits a sense of vitality and strength. Furthermore, the notion of power extends beyond postures, intertwining itself with the control of time. Power seeks permanence, striving to endure throughout history, often manifesting in attempts to regulate and claim time. Julius Caesar, for instance, created the Julian calendar and named July after himself, a move later emulated by Emperor Augustus with August. Adolf Hitler too emphasized the concept of a thousand-year Reich, aiming to leave a monumental mark on history. Through these summarized insights from Elias Canetti's A Crowds and Power, we hope to have enriched your understanding of different crowds and their inherent characteristics. The book highlights how crowd behavior has evolved from older human associations such as packs, and how religions carry elements of this evolution within their rituals. Further, it establishes the importance of national crowd symbols while shedding light on the complex nature of power and force. Ultimately, the analysis of body postures and the relationship between time and power reveal the human desire to make power eternal. Armed with this knowledge, you can now reflect on the influence of crowds and power in our everyday lives and in the world around us.